So, Lauren, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, it's a, a weird background. I was born and bred in Paddington. My father used to always say, Paddington born, Paddington bred. Strong in the arm and thick in the head. And uh, I was born in West Street up here and then St. Margaret's Hospital. Grew up a little bit here, then moved away and then I came back uh, when I was a young bloke and uh, lived here for most of my life. I'd always been interested in my real job, which was the non-paying job, which was collecting Australian folklore, local history, writing books, producing records and so forth, and occasionally um, performing. So that's essentially what I ended up with. And I, people say, what do we call you? And I, I used to say folklorist, but it doesn't really mean anything in Australia, so um, I'm now a cultural historian. Right. So where did that... Where did that love and that passion for the, for the, I guess, the bush and the, the music of, of, uh, of Australia, where did that all start? Well, Paddington was a different Paddington and, uh, you know, sitting here in the Royal Hotel at Fiveways, um, I know the history of this area and uh, just down the road was Glenmore Falls and this was a swamp and, uh, as we know, it was juniper berries on most of the surrounding hills. Um, which was fine because all the water drained down here and there was a distillery around the road um, which was the first distillery made gin and um, the, I mean, uh, people always ask me questions about the area I mean, why is Five Ways so confused? Why are the streets so confused around here? Well, the answer for that one is that Mr Palmer at Palmer Street who had a residence up here, quite a big residence, uh, and a couple of the other landowners, original landowners, refused to let people go through their property. So the roadways for the bullet teams, which came along here, going down the swamps and so forth, had to go in this strange, all over the place route. And uh, even when the trams came through here, and the trams came through here, and buses and so forth, um, it created havoc. So, I mean, there's so many things about the area. It's got such a great history, Paddington, and an unusual social history. Right, you, every decade you can look at it from the very beginning to now and see a real, a really interesting sort of study in urban living and revival. You just recorded a new album, and I believe some of the musicians were uh, incognito on the cover. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Um, yeah, look, I've made lots of albums. Uh, a lot of them are a, a, a thematic. So um, the ABC put out a series of 10 albums in 2010, um, which was, they were up for an ARIA award uh, that, um, as a finalist, which is great. But they told the history of Australia from convicts through to sporting songs. Um, but then I set out, I'd always been interested in collecting oddities and uh, I'd been collecting Australian bawdy songs and poetry for nearly 40 years. Uh, I'm talking about everything from football songs, rugby songs mainly, uh, hockey clubs used to have them, bushwalking clubs had them, these are really filthy things. Uh, but they were disappearing because we've become so politically correct that you can't sing Eskimo Nell or, or the Shearer's Lament or one of the classics. So I decided to write a book about it, which I've done. I, I put it up as an e-book on the iBook I store. It's uh, my 26th book. Um, I'm pretty productive. Uh, <laughs> like a machine. Uh, but the recordings I did, I did two. I called the, they were the definitive collection of Australian bawdy songs. One of them was called Sing Us Anothery Dirty as Buggery, and the other one was called Rooted in the Country. And uh, they're all the classics, but they're all were collected in circulation in Australia. Now, um, it's the sort of thing you'd sell in brown paper bags if I still had folkways, um, but it, uh, it's a document, and, and it's great fun. And then I also put another album out for the ABC just after that of the Australian Bush Orchestra, 
playing those early colonial tunes that once again I felt needed reviving. So lots of projects and the books. I did one on the history of Potts Point, e-book, it's up there now, and one on Australian wedding traditions and customs. So very diverse and very perverse. Album and the book, it's uh, on your website. Is yeah, the like there's a like a, it's. I've got a website that is just my name. If you Google Warren Fay or Australian Folklore Unit, um, there's lots of things to explore um, on local. About history. this uh, wonderful instrument you've got here. Yeah, and it's linked to the past, and I guess yeah. where you might be performing next. Well, certainly Saturday the 24th at 10:30 here at the Royal Hotel. Uh, I'll be doing an hour of uh, talking about Paddington history, growing up here, having businesses and singing the sort of songs that I've collected here. Um, the instrument is a concertina and it's got 48 keys. I taught myself to play because there was nobody else in Sydney that plays it. It predates the mouth organ, predates the accordion. It was invented by an Englishman, Sir Charles Wheatstone. In, nine, in 1823, and it was mainly to play classical music because it's... I don't play it that well actually, but it's got wonderful potential. Uh, you know, you could play classical music, but I play uh, songs from the bush. Um... Oh, who hasn't heard of you, Avalon Hall? The lads of the Lachlan, the great and the small. Fantastic. So look, we'll see you here at the Royal on the on the 24th. Yeah, and also um, you can see me on television because next month in September the SBS is screening a one-hour documentary on my work as a folklore collector and what the hell rat bag and rabble rouser that I am. Um, so that is going to air and the ABC is releasing it this month in August as a DVD.